little over two years after its announcement at EGX Res 2016, Sunless Skies is finally coming out of early access. More of a spiritual successor to Sunless Seas than a direct sequel, it takes gloomy, story-driven Victorian exploration into the skies, creating a spacescape teeming with life, even as it's in danger of being torn apart by war. It's a game I've been looking forward to for quite some time now, but then again, you might be wondering just what is Sunless Skies? What was Sunless Sea? How do the two relate? And more importantly, how do the two differ? Worry not, delicious friend, I'm here to tell you everything you need to know in order to get a locomotive of your own and take to the skies. So first, some background. Just what is Sunless Sea? Well, years ago, during the Victorian era, some bats came along and stole the city of London. As you do. Flying en masse, they dropped the city into an underground ocean called the Untersee, where it became Fallen London, a brooding gothic city of strange delights and stranger denizens. Fallen London was originally the setting of a browser and mobile-based game of the same name, in which characters explore the alleys, nooks and crannies of the city in search of fame and fortune. Sunless Sea, on the other hand, takes the action much further than Fallen London itself, giving players a ship and free license to explore the whole Untersee. With a strong emphasis on story, Sunless Sea lets you determine your Sea Captain's background and motivations, whether they be fame and fortune, or a quest to find their father's bones. Either way, playing Sunless Sea means sailing from port to port, encountering strange people on each island, and gathering threads of a story that gradually weave themselves into a rich and eerie tapestry. It's a beguiling, dreamlike experience that cuts a channel across the creepy, the touching, superstitious, and the downright grisly. If I could say one thing of Sunless Sea, it's that it's the most fun I've ever had eating a crewmate to stay alive. Not that I've done much of that, of course. It should also be noted that Sunless Sea really isn't afraid to kill you off. Running out of fuel or food between ports is almost always fatal. There are monsters in the deep, not to mention fickle gods, and there's every chance Terra itself will rise up to take you. The game makes a point of mentioning that each Z captain is fleeting, asking you to embrace that transience and be bold enough to experiment. All in all, a delightful and beautifully written experience, although all that death does often mean starting from scratch without inheriting anything from the previous captain. A frustrating quirk that means replaying a lot of the game content in order to get back up to speed. But anyway, that's enough about Sunless Sea. What is Sunless Skies and how is it different? Well, as I mentioned at the start of this video, Skies swaps the inky darkness of the Untersee for the reaches of space. Set ten years after Sunless Sea, it's the start of the 20th century and the British Empire, being fond of a bit of colonisation, has set out to make its mark on the stars. Unfortunately, the stars themselves appear to be dying out one by one, and what's more, a faction of disgruntled working-class skyfarers calling themselves the Takati have begun to rebel against the Empire, seeking to carve a life out for themselves free of the toil and tyranny of the establishment. It's a frontier and a war zone at the same time, in other words, and it's your job to find your place as you explore its various regions in search of fame, fortune, or hey, maybe you just fancy rustling up some more people to eat. I'm not judging. As you can probably tell from this footage, there's still a huge focus on the story, interspersed by bits of exploration, but apart from the fact you're driving a flipping steam train about in space, exactly how does it differ from Sunless Sea? For one thing, it's a far more mobile experience. Chugging through the waters of the Untersee, especially if you were trying to conserve fuel in a starter ship, was often slow and sometimes straight up cumbersome. By contrast, Skies is positively nimble. With manoeuvring thrusters all over your locomotive, turning about and chugging off on a new course through the stars is really easy and far kinder on fuel consumption. With a faster rate of travel, exploration is a far less daunting prospect as you set out to explore, which is handy really given the game is considerably bigger than its predecessor, something I'll come back to later on. 
Having a more responsive ship isn't just useful for getting about the place, mind you, it also comes in really handy for combat, which is a good thing because, at least in my experience, you're going to be doing a lot more of it. There are a good deal more ships populating sunless skies than you're likely to encounter on the Untersea, whether you're coming across marauders, skirmishes in the ongoing war for supremacy between the forces of the Empire and the Tacites, or just NPCs minding their own business. And that's before before you get onto the weird and wonderful creatures to be found strewn about the place. While you can of course try to avoid fighting altogether, it's considerably more likely you're going to be drawn into battle at least once. Thankfully, combat is a pretty fluid experience, especially when compared to Sunless Sea. The greater manoeuvrability means it is considerably easier to get a bead on your opponent, and with the starting locomotive firing fairly rapidly from the front of the cart, landing direct hits is fairly straightforward. You just need to keep an eye on the temperature gauge to ensure your weapons don't overheat. Defeating ships, of course, grants you salvage opportunities, meaning there's a good incentive to get stuck into a bit of argy-bargy when you come across a likely-looking target from time to time, even if you don't fancy picking sides in the ongoing war. Do be wary though, while the combat has undoubtedly improved over that of Sunless Sea, it's still possible to bite off far more than you can chew, which, to be honest, is a pretty good time to start talking about death in Sunless Skies. When you die in Sunless Sky's Legacy Campaign, your captain is gone for good. You make a new one, the game effectively resets, and you set out again. Now, that might sound dispiriting, especially if you manage to get quite far before meeting your untimely demise, but there are several factors at play in Sunless Skies aimed at making death less painful, or, at the very least, less of a trudge through the same opening missions you just finished doing. For one thing, it's fairly kind in terms of its inheritance mechanics. As you can see here, my death was followed by a decent sum of money going to the next captain, alongside a partial chart of the region. You still lose a whole load of stuff, granted, but consider for a moment how death works in Sunless Sea. You can pass on things like the sea chart, but first you have to get yourself a will. So there's a minimum level of progression that must be reached with each captain before you can start to provide for the future. Not so in Sunless Skies, which sort of runs the numbers for you, even if your captain dies relatively early on. In addition, it also allows you to save for the future, whether that's for a rainy day with your present captain or a healthy stock of items for the next one. Sunless Skies introduces the bank, which lets you store not only Echoes, the game's currency, but supplies, fuel, and other items as well. These items will be kept safe, waiting to be drawn out in other ports, which is extremely handy, not just for a new captain with an inheritance, but for when you're running low on supplies during a long voyage. With hold space at a premium, you'll find yourself spending a lot of time in Sunless Skies with perilously scant supplies. Knowing there's a ready supply of fuel and food waiting in the next port can be of great comfort, especially if you're currently strapped for cash. But if keeping your captain alive still seems like a daunting prospect in spite of those more forgiving systems, you could always play a merciful campaign instead. This more forgiving way of playing allows you to reload in the event of your untimely demise, making it easier to forge ahead and see the game's story for yourself without fear of starting from scratch. So, Sunless Skies is shaping up to be a more manoeuvrable, more aggressive, and a more forgiving game than Sunless Sea, but it's also a darned sight bigger to boot. The game is split into a number of distinct regions, with one more coming when the game finally launches. Each has its own distinctive style, story gobbits, and uncanny adversaries, making for a larger and much more diverse seeming experience than its watery predecessor. Splitting the regions, in my opinion, seems like a smart choice. It allows for greater variety, sure, but it also enables you to set out on an adventure without being daunted by the vast expanse of seeming nothingness on your map. Having the whole game lumped into one massive area would doubtless lead to a lot of fruitless exploration while trying to find a particular port for the first time, whereas having individual regions allows for the story's tempo to be a bit more closely controlled. And thankfully, while the regions themselves can be quite busy, Sunless Skies still manages to retain that sense of isolation between ports. The slightly haunting music, the lovely art, and the smooth, ponderous, 
frequently messy business of getting from A to B really makes you feel at times like you're an insignificant speck floating in an inky void. But then you get to your destination and feel anything from a sense of community to a vague feeling of dread to a feeling of great influence over the people you're there to visit. In short, this is a game of changing fortunes and calculated risks, one written in the typical fallen London style, which is to say the game's text manages to be both evocative and brief. In other words, it's a really nice game to just go and explore. And there you have it, a quick look at what you can expect from Sunless Skies when it launches. Hopefully you found this video interesting. If you did, there are plenty more from Eurogamer for you to watch. Some of those should be on screen now, so do give them a click. Do like and subscribe so you don't miss anything, but most importantly, thank you very much for watching, and have a lovely day.